The face blend feature is a set of surfacing options used in situations requiring more control than a fillet. A fillet can be applied only between connected faces and cannot create a new surface, but the face blend can be applied to both connected and disconnected faces, and it can create multiple face blends that can be detached from the faces on which they are applied. Let's look at some scenarios that are common. Let's create a face blend between this vertical surface and this split surface that we have on the horizontal plane. We can switch the direction and even select tangent hold lines so that way we can get the fillet to transition from that bottom split line. We can detach it and we can show ISO curves. We also have control of the cross section of the radius, whether we want a circular, conic, or curvature controlled fillet. We can even turn it into a chamfer. Let's look at this scenario where we have two sets of surfaces that we want to blend together. In this case, we will take the face blend, select the bottom side of the tube, and select the split surface here, select the radius that we're looking for, and select two conic hold lines using the constraints and limits. As you can see, the ISO curves look very pleasing from this direction, and we can test the different types of control that we have at our fingertips right here. Let's set the magnitude of that curvature. Here we have a number of adjacent surfaces that we also want to take care of. I want to pick one vertical side and a horizontal side, but we need to select the propagation options. In this case, we'll choose adjacent. As you can see, the ISO curves are as you expect, but we can also change it to a swept profile. In this case, using the edge of the top surface to orient the direction of the fillet, as you can see, the ISO curves are matching the direction. We can also use limits to help start and stop the fillet from one face to another. Here in this particular scenario, we have the ability to take two sets of disconnected surfaces and connect them with a face blend with a hold line. Face one and two are selected. We select a direction and we select the tangent hold line. Furthermore, we have options to create asymmetrical face blends. Similarly, we have the ability to select inverted tangent to edge hold lines. I'm going to select the top two surfaces of the vertical surface and the horizontal surface, choose my tangent to edge, and you can see the difference between the uh, normal tangent and the inverse tangent. This is one of my favorites, the ability to set the face blend between planes. You go in here, you set the limits, choose the plane limits, and you can use the arrows on screen to help get you in the right place. This one's interesting. We have a cliff edge where we have a window inside of the fillet path. Choose set face one and set face two, and we have the ability under constraints and limits to select the cliff edges one and two. As you can see, this is quite a deep tool set and there will be many different types of situations that you will be able to work with with the face blend in Onshape. We hope that you share with us all of the different great examples that you're able to create for the products that you build in Onshape today with the new face blend feature. In this release, you'll find a handful of new shortcuts. 
Transitioning to a tangent arc from a sketch line is very common and can be easily achieved by simply bringing your cursor back and hovering over the endpoint of the line. When you move your cursor away again, you'll notice it'll do so with an arc. After placing the arc, it will automatically reset to a sketch line. However, the process can be easily repeated to make another tangent arc. Alternately, it can be activated from your keyboard using the shortcut Shift A. A sketch point can now be activated from the keyboard shortcut Shift S. You may also initiate a revolve feature with the shortcut Shift W. Finally, all sketches in a part studio may be toggled between hidden and shown using the shortcut Shift H. With this release, you'll find a new option in the Extrude feature for Thin Extrude. Thin Extrudes will automatically add wall thickness to a sketch line as well as extruding it in the normal direction of the sketch plane. You may easily flip the wall direction or apply a second value for direction too. Notice that all other end conditions and familiar options for your standard extrude still reside here. A thin extrude is a great way to quickly create rib-like features, perhaps in a scenario like this, extruding upwards, where a rib wouldn't apply. But it's not limited to just lines. You can also thin extrude closed contours to create a shell-like effect in a single feature. Thin features are a productivity improvement to speed up your modeling in a variety of applications. Simple brackets, frames, compression plates, machine parts, and many more. In this last short example, you can see it can even be used in context to quickly create gaskets or spacers. There have been several improvements to the helix feature. First, you may define a helix by new references cylindrical or conical face, an axis such as sketch geometry, or a circular edge. Previously, the only way to adjust the starting point of a helix was by an angle. But now, you can select a start condition and pick a start point. Using the option Turns and Pitch has fully defined this helix. But what if instead we specifically want it to end at a certain point? By selecting a different input type, we will now see additional options for end condition, and once again can select a specific point. Based on the selections and the target number of revolutions you specify, Onshape automatically calculates the result to terminate at the selected endpoint. By changing the input type to pitch, you can see it similarly calculates the exact pitch required as close as possible to your target in order to intersect at that selected endpoint. Finally, if you choose to define by an axis, you will now have to define a start radius, but optionally can add a different end radius. This is an easy way to create a tapered helix. Surface finish symbols can now be directly attached to geometric dimensioning and tolerance frames. New in this Onshape update is support for independent parameters in a dimension, like a hole callout or a chamfer dimension, for individual parameters to be inspected. In this case, you can see I have bubbles for each parameter in this hole callout, including tolerances. When I export the CSV inspection list, you will note that each independent parameter is indeed called out. One very important thing to understand about how to set this up is that you need to update your drawing templates to support this functionality. To do that, simply go to your drawing properties panel and go to the inspection items tab 
and make sure item parsing is set to parameter instead of row. This will be done on all Onshape native templates, but for custom templates, you need to set this up. For users creating advanced custom features, a new function, Approximate Spline, enables you to create smoother and better parameterized curves that in turn help you create smoother and better quality surfaces. Using OpFit Spline to create a curve through points produces a spline that follows the points exactly. This curve needs a lot of control points in order to do this, so as you can see, the curvature of the curve can be erratic, with significant changes in curvature depending upon the accuracy of the input points. This can have a significant effect on your surfaces and on downstream features. Approximate spline, on the other hand, will create a best fit curve based on the degree of the curve and a specified allowable deviation or tolerance. Now when you look at the curvature combs, you can see how much smoother the curve is. Increasing the degree of the curve introduces more control points to bring the curve closer to the input points while keeping the curve smooth. Reducing the tolerance brings the result closer to that of OpFit Spline, but notice the curvature at the ends of the curve, they're much better quality using Approximate Spline. This can be seen better in this example of an enhanced parametric curve feature. Using OpFit Spline, you have no control over the curvature at the ends of the spline. Now take a look using Approximate Spline. OpFit Spline also does not give you control over the parameterization of a curve. This can be seen here while lofting a surface between two curves. The surface has an extra element of twist in it as the parameterization of the two curves is not consistent. This can be clearly seen by showing the control point grid. Compare this to using Approximate Spline, which does control parameterization, and OpCreate B-Spline surface, which gives a nicer control point grid, and it's clear to see that the surface quality is much improved with no twist. Finally, putting all these new curves and surfaces together enables you to create very complex features with excellent quality results. The approximate spline function enables you to build multiple curves with matching parameterization in a single call, so that complex end results can be achieved with minimal effort. This enhanced sweep feature takes the original profile curve and applies multiple transformations along the path to define a network of curves to fit a surface to. The end result is a very flexible and high quality feature. As the saying goes, to get good quality surfaces, you need good quality curves, and this new function delivers just that. You can also be confident that any downstream features will regenerate consistently and with better quality geometry. In this update for Onshape for iOS, we have the ability to copy a tab to the clipboard and then paste it into the document or into another document. On Onshape for iOS, custom features are now sorted alphabetically by default. Here you can see if I add a new custom feature, it will appear alphabetically in the order in which it should. It is now easy to use the Make Connector as a way to help you locate sketch planes and features. Use the Make Connector symbol in any location where it makes sense to use it. For example, here in the selection of a sketching plane and the location of a feature. It works really well for whole features where we can go in and just start selecting the center points of each face and locate the position of each hole. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.